football fans, wherever you are, citywide, statewide, nationwide, and worldwide, we welcome you to another edition of the Three Man Rush. I am the big O Jerry Ostrowski. She is Sarah Larson, and we are brought to you today by the one and only Picasso's Pizza. And uh, welcome to this episode. It's uh, brought to you on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network, and it is presented by Picasso's Pizza. Treat yourself to the most flavorful pizza on game day. Picasso's We Are Buffalo Pizza, shipping local and nationwide. Order online, Picasso's Pizza. Dot net. Sarah, we will get to you in a second. I feel like we could go ahead and fill a 60-minute show just on your travels over the last 7 to 10 days. Yeah. But um, Oklahoma and Florida State with a barn burner right now. Yes, um, yes. A very, very good game. And it looks that I believe Florida State kicked a field goal to go ahead and take the lead. Um, All right. Waiting for I didn't a little bit it. of an update. Yeah, I didn't see it. I uh, I actually just got to Buffalo about an hour ago, and uh, I uh, kind of ran up and watched the the fourth quarter, which has been really great. Um, obviously, it, I did not want FSU to win, but <laughs> it's been a tremendous game. It's thirty five thirty two, Florida State, fifty five seconds left. Being in Tulsa, Oklahoma, every TV at the hospital right. was uh, put on this game. Everybody's watching it. Um, it's been a really, really good game. And one of the things I think it's been so hard, we were talking about it today, so hard to figure out. You don't know who's coming. You don't know who's going, who's in the portal, who's not in the portal. And these games that you think you can pick have been really hard to uh, figure out. Yeah, yeah. It kind of goes to show, uh, I know last week uh, we talked a little bit about the Oregon and UNC game. And I kept on saying, you know, kept on saying that UNC is a lot better than people were giving them credit for. And they were leading into the fourth quarter, but uh, Oregon came back. It was a great game last night. Bo Nix came back 14 points in the fourth quarter. What a game. I was, you know, it was one of those games. I think there was a 14 point, um, they were 14 point favorites and they just barely pulled it out. But, um, you know, it was definitely a great game. Um, I also wanted to congratulate the, uh, the Buffalo Bulls on their first yes win uh, their first bowl win so that was you know awesome um we didn't give them enough credit uh i know that i had said of course we're going to be pulling for them but uh they ended up winning the camilla bowl we thought georgia southern southern was just that much better um but they they, you know they pulled it out uh there was a couple of key turnovers that that helped them and uh you know i i didn't i wasn't able to watch the whole game but i did watch half of it um and they, they actually looked really good. Uh, Cole Snyder looked really well. Uh, you know, I, I was impressed. And, you know, definitely they didn't, they looked a lot better than they did at the end of the, um, at the end of the year. So uh, congratulations cool to them. You know, pr- pretty cool stuff too. Um, you know, it's funny. People don't think these bowl games are important. And then you look at UB, they win this game. They got pictures from the airplane. The head coach has the trophy strapped next to him in the seat. I mean, it's a big deal. It's, it's a huge a huge game for UB. They got a ton of momentum into the off season. Um, you know, the MAC conference again gets more publicity. They get more uh, success in bowl games. They've been a league, a conference that has had quite a bit of success in postseason games. So, you know, congrats to them. Awesome way to finish it. You know, of course, Syracuse didn't win today, but they played a lot better than I thought they would. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, Minnesota's. Yeah, uh, this, I, 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 I really. These, I don't know how you figure these teams out. Yeah, I really thought that Minnesota was going to just run away with the the game. And to be honest with you, my my drive from Chicago today, it was part of like what kept me going was because I was able to listen to this game because you get a little bored sometimes on an eight hour drive. But, um, you know, Cuse was down early and then they finally found something at the end of the half. Um, it, It was you know, cool to see because it was only like about 50 seconds left and, and Schrader right. went down the field and he started hitting his wide receivers on the outside and it was working. And uh, we ended up scoring right before half. And then when we came back out, he kind of marched down the field again. And the defense right. was, you know, also, you know, making stops. And we got two um, field goals, unfortunately, w- instead of uh, touchdowns. Now, they were they were marching down the field. If they would have been able to convert those, uh, it would have been a totally different game. But in the end, he made a, a huge error in throwing a, uh, a pick six. And I think it was pretty much 
you know, what kind of solidified the, you know, their loss. But, um, you know, I think that um, that Babers has, you know, some things to look forward to. Syracuse had a lot of people that set out this game, either through the transfer portal or opting out. Um, and Minnesota didn't. They, they weren't competing with the same uh, level of um, opt-outs. So, you know, good for Syracuse for sticking in there. You know, they uh, only, lo- only lost by eight. But um, I actually thought that it was going to be a blowout. And a quick update as the clock runs down and goes to zero. Oklahoma can't get anything going on offense. Florida State, the 13th ranked uh, team in the nation, they beat the Sooners today in the Cheez-It Bowl 35-32. to So that one's over yeah. with. Really, and really good my, football game. As my Facebook page, I'm sure, is going to be lit up with all of my uh, FSU fans <laughs> or friends that are fans. So that'll be fun to to read up on later on tonight. Right. <laughs> but it's just like we always say about Miami. I college football is better with the really strong Florida State team and and coach Norvell. Florida teams. Period. Period. Yeah. Right. When you got a Florida State, the the Gators, the, you know the Canes. When you have um the, when you have those three teams exceeding in um in college football. It's just better. It really is. And in college football's missed out on having, you know, at least a couple of those teams um, you know, succeeding. So hopefully uh this is a little bit of a snippet of what's to come. Uh, you know, so we'll see how that's going. But it is finally time for some like really yeah. good bowl games coming up. We have the New Year's six, which includes the two semifinal games and then the four other you know, big games that we all, you know, know and love, you know, that has been going on for the last few years, the Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, I'm trying to think if I can name them all off, Sugar Bowl. Um, what else am I missing? Did you say Orange Bowl? I did say Orange Bowl. That one's you by me. Cotton, Cotton, Bowl? Cotton Bowl. That's the other one I was thinking of. Yes. Rose Bowl in and the, the Rose Bowl, uh, one semifinal game, the Peach Bowl. Peach Bowl. Yep. All really right. Into it. So, uh, so, like, I guess let's just jump into it this time. Let's hey, talk it, about like, the... Like Coach Prime says, you know where to find us. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and jump into these games. And I think yeah. our first game is what? The Capital the Orange, Orange Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, that one starts on Friday. Uh, it's the first one um, at 8 p.m. That's the one that's in Miami every year, at, uh, the Hard Rock. Um, Clemson is four and a half point favorites. And the over under is 63 and a half. So how do you feel uh, about I mean, this game? An, I actually this is another game. I mean, you've got you've got a ton of turnover. You got a ton of turnover. You've got Clemson, whose quarterback has already transferred to Oregon State. Um, now, of course, he's been benched, and uh, I'm not even going to attempt to uh, pronounce his last name. <laughs> um, but anyway, you got you got you got that going on. Obviously, Hooker at Tennessee. He's been hurt, hurt. Hasn't played. Yeah. Um, money leans towards Tennessee. Um, you look at the last five games; they're both identical, three and two. I I tend to I tend to lean towards Tennessee in this one. Um, I, I I think that they have just a little bit too much firepower. I know that they've gotten shut down by a really really strong Georgia team. There's a reason why they're playing in the semifinal. Um, Clemson Clemson, while they are good, they're stable. They've got a good program. They have good culture. I just think Tennessee's too much, and I like them in this Orange Bowl. So I'm going to be rooting for everything I got for Tennessee. Um, I just – I loved what they kind of put together this year. Um, I think it's going to come down to coaching. Uh, And, you know, uh, Sweeney is just maybe a little bit more – what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Seasoned. Experienced. Experienced, seasoned. Yeah. So – I think it might come down to that, but um, I also think that even, you know, with, with Hooker out for Tennessee, it's going to be very hard for them um, to to win against Clemson's defense. But I think that if Milton, um, and I believe he's a transfer from, from Michigan, um, I don't know a lot about him. They didn't look the same last, you know, last, or well, last game. I won't say last week, last game. They just didn't look the same with him under center, but He's supposed to be the kind of their their quarterback of the future, so we have to see what it's going to look like with with him under center. And um, I'm going to be pulling for Tennessee, but right now I have Clemson winning 38-34. Hmm. Very nice. 
Um, I'm taking Tennessee, and I'm uh, going to lay the points and say they will cover as well. Um, All right. I'm not going to. You you actually had a lot of time in a card today to think about actual point I, totals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, and I actually did it in my head. I was like, they're not going to. I was like, Clemson's going to win, but they're not going to cover. So I'm like, there's got to be. It's going to be four point. Like I literally right. did the math. So I was joking on my way here that my son is like, I have no clue what I'm talking about right now, but I feel like I can sit in on the show with you guys because <laughs> we we went back and forth for you know a good three hours. So, um, well, have, so them, the, have them, have them jump on in. Yeah. <laughs> right. no problems. My son is so shy. It's not even funny. Uh, <laughs> all right. So the next game coming up then is on uh, Saturday. It's the all state sugar bowl. I think this is probably going to be the best non, um, non semifinal game. In my opinion, Alabama and Kansas state, um, again, with me, I am going to be pulling tooth and nail for Kansas State. I've been rooting for them all season long. I, I know I've been kind of their cheerleader on here. Alabama's six and a half point favorites and the over under is 55 uh, and a half, which I'm actually surprised about. I thought it would be more. So I'm going to take the over on that one. Right. So uh, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I'm, I was surprised. I don't know if you heard, but I was surprised to hear that, um, that Bryce Young is going to actually play in this game. No, I figured he would. Um, really, he, I didn't. Right. He's a competitor. I mean, the kid, the kid, the kid get. I, I for for all. It's really like I said. We've talked about this. It's really hard for me to cheer for a Lincoln Riley coach team. It's hard for me to cheer for Lincoln Riley himself. Um, I didn't think he handled the Oklahoma situation very well. Obviously, he took all the offensive talent to USC. With that being said, I do think Williams is a class kid. I think he's a he's a hard nosed kid. Um, let's, let's forget about the, uh, the foul language painted on his fingernails. Well, uh, I don't know if you've seen any of that, no. but, um, yeah, he usually puts, um, uh, F word and then whoever they're playing that week on the other hand. Oh, okay. his, yeah. So I, I talk about class and he does that, but anyway, I think he's a great player. Um, I think that, um, you know, I, I, uh, Go ahead. Do you have do you have a favorite between Alabama and Kansas State? Do I have a favorite? Because I lost track. I was talking about USC. I was thinking about can I'm I'm sorry. I lost track because I was trying to find something on my on my phone as far as stats. I like let's let's do this over again. I like Bama. I like K State. I like K State to win this game. Wow. I do. I like. I, I love that. I love that. As much as I'm going to be pulling for Casey, I still have Bama winning, though. I have and covering, so I have them winning 34 um, 27. Here's why. I, and here's why I like this game. I think K State sets up for for Bama. I think it's a good. I think it's a good matchup. I think I love Bama it. and and K State are are two teams that are the matchup's good. I think the physicality will be there. I like Kansas State. I like what they do, even with Martinez out. They showed that they've got great quarterback play. Um, I do like the uh, I do like them, and I especially like them coming off of a uh, a Big Twelve title, beating uh, TCU, another TCU. Final Four team. I think Alabama's still young. I think they're still reeling a little bit from from guys that they've lost in the portal, guys going to the draft, uh, going to the draft early, and all those types of things. Um, you know, Bama right now, uh, the money is leaning towards them. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go with K State on this one. Both teams four and one in their last five. And I apologize, I lost track there for a second. No, 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 you're good. You're good. You're good. I I actually love the fact that you're picking K State. Like I said, I'm going to be rooting for them like nothing else. Uh, I I can't stand Alabama. Obviously, I've said that before. Um, but I am being a little bit of a realist, so uh, that's why I have the 34-27. Um, really weird start time for the Sugar Bowl. The Sugar Bowl is usually the last game of the day. And it's a twelve o'clock uh, Eastern time start. Really weird yeah. start time. For it's that because game. they're not doing any games on Sunday this year. They're not doing any games on New Year's Day, okay. and that's why because they have um, the uh, NFL games to compete with. Right. And everything. Right. So um, the next one up is the Goodyear Cotton Bowl, and that is now your you see the USC tr- now I'm back to USC. Can yes, we rewind? With, yeah. Can we rewind? Yeah. Uh, with, uh, going against uh, number 16, Tulane. Um, that one's on Monday at uh, 1 p.m. Um, kind of uh, kind of surprising. It's only a two-and-a-half point 
favorite for the USC. That was a, that was a surprise to me. The over and under um, is 62 and a half. Um, I think you kind of said it. I think this is all it rests whether or not Caleb William plays. I know that um, he had a hamstring injury um, that he's been trying to work through. Oh, you said he's um, going to play. That's what you've heard. No, I, it, it's it's still kind of up in the air. He okay. says that he feels like he's going to play. So him saying he feels like he's going to play and whether or not he's effective going out there and playing is, you know, two totally different things. Um, but USC still has, I think they have five or six starters that are um, going to be out, whether or not it's injury or they have opted out. So I think that they have uh, a, an uphill battle. And, and Tulane is actually the opposite. They have nobody really out, nobody opted out. Um, and I think that that's why the, the point spread is so low. It actually might make the game closer than than it should be. So uh, I, this is the game that I hope, and and not just because I dislike USC, but I love Tulane so much. I love Tulane so much. The A, you know, they're in the AAC, and they're eleven and two, sixteenth ranked. This football team is built the way. If you're an old school football dude like me, this is the way you build a football team. They're tough. They're physical, hard-nosed kids. They run the football. USC blows them out of the air, out of the water in every category except rushing yards. And um, Tulane is um, they're they're fifty-fifth ranked in rushing yards. Um, USC's not; they're like ninety-fourth, I believe. But you know, if you look at statistics offensively, it's a it's it should all go to USC. But then if you look at defense, and you look at the way Tulane plays defense. You know, this is the this is a team that can get after it. Um, I I'm picking USC because I, I'm trying to I'm trying to choose with my mind as far as intelligence goes. My heart wants to pick Tulane so bad, um, yeah. but I just can't take that minimum amount of points and um, you know and say okay, I'll I'll take Tulane. But um, you know, both teams playing really really well. Um, but I will take USC money leans towards USC. Um, you know, if Caleb Williams comes back, it could be Tulane hasn't seen a quarterback like him in, in their conference right. all year long. As good as, yeah. as good as the AAC plays football and as many wide open offenses that there are in the AAC, they haven't seen anything like this. So, so I had two score. Place. Yeah. I had two score predictions. I have one with Caleb Williams and one without, without, yeah. I have them. Um, I have Tulane covering the spread. 30 to 28, uh, still losing, but, but covering the spread. And if Caleb Williams plays, I have a feeling it's going to be, uh, you know, like 40 to, to right. that 28. So I, I, right. I feel like they're going to score, you know, probably at least another 10 points. Um, and they will be airing it out because that's what USC does when, uh, when he's in there. So, you know, the one thing about USC is, they don't play great defense, but they play timely defense. They make big plays, and they tend to rush the passer pretty well. And, um, you know, they can have uh, – you know, they can get after it a little bit. But I do think Tulane matches up really well. One of the strengths of their football team is their offensive line. So I'll take USC either way, whether he plays or he doesn't play. And um, we'll see how that goes. So hopefully the Green Wave, another mascot that has a name that does not have an S on it. Yeah. Hopefully they play well this week or next. So, week. uh, so next is the other uh, Monday night game, uh, January second. It is. Oh, the bill. The... We're talking about the Bills already. No. Oh, <laughs> that, okay. No, no that. I, yeah, that game College too. Game. No. Okay. Um, we have the Rose Bowl. We we have Utah <laughs> versus uh, Penn State. So that is uh, Utah's two uh, two point favorites, and the over under is fifty two and a half. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to throw it out there. Most people have Penn State winning. Um, but I, I kind of like the Utes in this one. Um, it's a small sample size for me. I've really only watched them twice this year, both against USC. Uh, so they're probably like, don't pick me, don't pick me, because you picked USC twice against us. Um, and, and we beat them both times. So now I'm going to change it up on them. And <laughs> I'm going to actually pick Good. Utah. <laughs> Um, just as a, 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 you know, little fun fact, Penn State has actually lost their last seven straight to ranked opponents. So, Ooh. um, it'll be interesting to see how this game goes. Like I said, uh, a lot of people have Penn State winning, but I, uh, I have 27, 24 Utah. 
my issue with and I am a lifer when it comes to Penn State. It's the only school that I wanted to go to out of high school. Um, I had an opportunity to walk on. They did not offer me a scholarship. I went to Tulsa. That being said, this is like no Penn State team that I've ever seen in my life. Um, I I dislike everything about them with under James Franklin. They're not okay. physical. They're not tough. We don't grind it out. It's it's not it's nowhere near what if you've looked at the teams that I've picked so far, other than Tennessee, there's a common theme, okay? With with it, I, there's there's physicality, there's defense, there's rushing the football. Kansas State is that team. Now USC, I didn't pick I didn't pick Tulane, but I love Tulane. That's the same type of team. I am I absolutely love the Utes. I think the Utes play football the way you're supposed to play football. That's my phrase of the day, by the way, playing the way that you're supposed to play, the way you were taught back in the day. They're rugged. They're rough. I, I The money is leaning towards Penn State. The favorite is Penn State. Everybody's picking Penn State. I am not. And I don't see, I, especially going to Pasadena, Utah will travel well. This is Pac-10 country. I mean, yep. Penn State fans travel well, too. I went to the Alamo Bowl one time. They played A&M. It was a huge, you know, a huge following. But still, I, I just everything that Utah does well is is it picks on it picks on Penn State's weaknesses. And I just like the Utes in this game. I think they're going to be incredibly motivated. And um, you know, I like them winning. I like them, you know, I like them like them taking care of business. All right, so we both have Utah on this one. And then we got the semifinals, the the nice playoffs uh, that we've uh, grown to kind of love and hate at the same time. Um, first game we have is the Fiesta Bowl. We have Michigan versus TCU uh, on Saturday af- evening at 4 p.m. Um, that one's coming from Glendale, Arizona. Michigan is seven and a half point favorites. Um you know, I, I'm going to kind of go back. These are the two teams that I kind of felt were, I don't want to say um, were going to be tested most of the season, whether or not they really should be here. Um, Michigan surprised me against uh, against Ohio State. So I uh, TCU did not surprise me, um, especially against K-State. So um, I am going to lean towards Michigan, even without Kurum. Um, I think that uh, Edwards uh, was really did really well against Ohio State, um, and and you know coming in as the backup. Um, so you know I am going to lean towards Harbaugh in this one and and <laughs> take Michigan. Um, I don't have them covering the full seven and a half points though. I have Michigan thirty four, TCU wow. twenty seven. Okay. And I do have TCU, you know, coming back in the second half. That They've done that all year. Um, I feel like they'll be down uh, heavy in the beginning, and they'll they'll try to make that push in, um, in the second half. It just won't be enough. You know, this is a – I think this has a chance of being a really, really tremendous football game. I think it's 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 two football teams that are – this this matchup is very similar to Michigan playing Ohio State. And I think if you look at TCU, they will probably watch a ton of Ohio State film because these are two very similar programs, two very similar teams. You know, uh, Duggan is, comes in with 3,321 passing yards on 30 touchdowns passing. Um, he's he's, uh, he's going ahead. He's only thrown four interceptions. He's incredibly accurate. He's uh, I think he's rushed for another four or six touchdowns. Um, obviously a Heisman Trophy finalist. Yep. Then you look at Michigan and you got J.J. McCarthy, another tremendous quarterback who's accurate, completing 68.5% of his passes, 2,366 yards, 20 touchdowns. Um, he can also run it, 254 yards rushing, four touchdowns on the season. Um, you know, both of these teams are wanting to impose their will in the running game. I mean, they have – they have targets in the passing game, especially Duggan and Quinton Johnson and a couple other complimentary receivers, uh, Tay Barber, Savion Williams, Darius Davis, to name a few. They can help spread the field. But I think when you look at this, these are teams that want to play tough defense and they want to rush the ball. The difference is, 
you know, you look at Michigan, they lose Blake Corum, they go to Donovan Edwards. I think most backs will be successful behind that offensive line, offensive Sarah. Line. I think yep. that offensive line is tremendous. Yep. Um, I think any back that comes in, probably a four or five, you know, these guys are all four and five star backs. Quorum leaves, you bring another one in. Um, he probably successful behind this offensive line. Duggan, however, that TCU attack, they do a lot of quarterback runs. And even though they do, um, you know, uh, Kendra, Kendra Miller, the running back at TCU, 1,342 yards, 17 touchdowns. He's a very capable running back as well. Um, now you got a team that rushes the ball against a Michigan defense that gives up only 85 yards a game rushing. Two, you know, two immovable objects. I mean, this is this this game is so similar, so similar to to Michigan and Ohio State. Obviously, TCU playing the role of Ohio State. Here's the key, I think, in this game, the big key. Besides our normal keys, which are always what turnovers, big plays, things like that. I think the key is Joe Gillespie and TCU's 3-3-5 defense. I think Michigan feels they will be able to run at will against that 3-3-5. And, you know, I don't – while Michigan has played some very good opponents, TCU is very capable with Horton and Mitchell at defensive end. They got Winters and Hodge at linebacker. The 3-3-5 is tricky. You think you can run against it, but it's hard. Um, the safeties come down. 3-3-5 is very similar to what they run in Buffalo with the 4-2-5. Very, very similar. And um, that, to me, is the key of the game, sir. Can TCU stop that run? And if they can stop – and when you say stop the run against Michigan, what do you, what do you really mean? <laughs> right? Hold them under 200. <laughs> you know what, sir? That's a great point. That's exactly what I was going to say. You hold them under 200 yards, right? Yeah. So if, if, they can, if they can keep the rushing game manageable and don't let Michigan just churn big minutes of that clock, they got a chance. Yeah, because well, they're and, dusty and their their quarterback, their leader is is a tremendous player. And so. you made a huge point about them watching the Ohio State game, <laughs> right. um, because if they if they do the <laughs> if they do the opposite, <laughs> um, right. I mean Ohio State just looked bad. And to be honest with you, I going into that game, I thought Ohio State was the better team. Right. I I was you know I don't want to call Michigan. Um, an impersonator or anything, because I kind of felt that way going going into that game. Um, but I, I did. I felt like Ohio State was was going to just run, a, you know, you know, and not run technically, but you know, walk all over um, Michigan, and they fooled the heck out of me. Um, I was extremely surprised um, at how Michigan played that game, and it wasn't with Corum; it was with Edwards. So. Um, you know, I think it'll be a, it'll be a good game. I, I just don't think, um, TCU is, is going to be able to, um, withstand the, the entire, um, will of, of Michigan and their, their running attack. Now, with that being said, if they can, like you were, you were stating, if their defense can hold them, um, say to under 200 yards, I don't think their passing attack is enough. Um, and if TCU can get their passing attack going, It'll be ridiculous because we've seen what um, Duggan can do out on, right. uh, you know, when, especially when his back is to the wall. That's right. why in the second half, he's so good, um, you know, throughout the yep. whole season. So I think it'll be a good game. I think that the next game, though, will be probably a better game. Uh, it's the the Peach Bowl with uh, Georgia no, um, I didn't against. Get to make my, I didn't get to make my pick. Oh, okay. Sorry. So you, pick, Mich you pick Michigan, but they won't cover? Correct. I'm the same pick as you. I got Michigan, but I don't have them covering. I think TCU just gives them everything they want. And I actually think TCU will expose them a little bit. But, you know, Michigan's still going to be able – they're still going to be able to do what they do, and I, they'll score enough points to win. But I think it'll be a very good game. Now yeah. let's go to the next one. All right. All right. So we have the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. This is not fair because it's basically a Georgia home game. Um, but yes. uh, Georgia against Ohio State, uh, Saturday evening. Um, Georgia is six and a half point favorites and the over under is 62 and a half. So uh, I think this game, I think that it's a good matchup. You have a really good defense against a really, you know, potentially good offense um is i think it's going to be you know i think it's going to be kind of you know that smash mouth um georgia loves to run the ball 
Um, I think they and they are also four and zero against the spread. So I think that Ohio State has to figure out a way to stop them um, from from running all over them. So that's kind of you know their key to the game. But um, in the end, I think that you know Coach Smart is uh, going to pull off the victory with with Georgia. I do have them um, a little bit closer than what a lot of people have it. I, I don't have I I don't have them covering the spread, but I do have them winning. So I think C.J. Stroud for Ohio State is going to look the part. Um, they also have uh, I can't I can't even think um, of the wide receiver. Uh, he's a junior. Um, Harrison. Uh, Marvin, Marvin Harrison. Harrison. Some yeah, junior. Yes. Yes. I think that their offense can be great. I, they really can be. Um, it's just C.J. Stroud needs to be on. And when he is on, um, I think they're they're pretty un, uh, unbeatable. Uh, the problem is, is Georgia's defense. I, I just don't see Stroud running, you know, running the ball um, like he can, you know, he can get out of the pocket and, and kind of, you know, expose defenses. I just don't see that happening against Georgia. Um, I think when you look at this game, again, um, the big guys rule, okay? You've got tremendous line play on both sides. Um, these are teams where the offensive lines are just absolutely dominant. Um, you, you look at Georgia, and, um, you know, Georgia has given up seven sacks this season in over 400 pass plays. The Buckeyes have given up eight sacks. Okay. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely numbers. ridiculous. Right. Tremendous numbers. Um, these are teams that that you know, and you look at Georgia and last year their defense was just scary good. I mean, 49 sacks this year, they're not quite as good. They've only gotten 26 sacks in the regular season. Now they've lost some guys to the first round in the NFL draft, so obviously didn't have quite the talent they had. But you know, Ohio State, they come in with 32 sacks through three game through 12 games. And Georgia have had some uh, recent success, I think, four against LSU and four against Georgia Tech towards the end of the year. So they're, they're starting to find their pass rush with eight sacks late in the season. This this is a line-type game. Again, this is, this is the big guys. This is tremendous offensive lines versus tremendous defensive lines. And I think the key to this game, and you really look at it, and I really give a lot of credit to a girl good friend of mine, R.J. Young, who is the um, Fox Sports uh, college digital correspondent. He does. Uh, he runs uh, college football for Fox Digital. And I was listening to him, and he, he made a really good point. And, and if, if Ohio State thinks they're going to go into the, into the mouth of the monster, meaning attack that front seven of Georgia, it's going to be a long night. This is an Ohio State team that has speed at quarterback, has speed on the perimeters. They can get outside and do some things. And when you look at Ohio State and explosive plays, you know, the Buckeyes have 14 passing plays of 40 yards or more, which is good for 11th nationally. And they've got eight runs of over 40 yards or more, which is 10th in the FBS. So they have the ability to get some explosive plays. In turn, as good as that Georgia defense is, they rank 96th in the FBS in allowing 21 completions of over 30 yards or at least 30 and 112th with 12 completions of 40 or more yards. So they are susceptible to right. giving up the big play. And with the way this Ohio State team pass pros, and they can keep Stroud clean, if he can have a good day, and you brought him up earlier, Marvin Harrison Jr. and the likes of those receivers can make plays outside, Ohio State could shock some people. They really, really could. Um, as good as Georgia is, we've seen some things. And if you remember, I believe it was the Tua game where Georgia was, I believe was it Georgia was winning and then Tua comes in and throws as a freshman and they go ahead and they win. Kirby's teams will give up some, some big stuff. Um, Georgia, uh, uh, Ohio State's going to have to find a way to, to get on the perimeter as I said, I don't think they can they can live and die on the inside. With that being said, you know, in a Georgia team that ranks seventh in the FBS of five point five yards per carry, I just I just think that when I look at this game, 
my football mind is telling me that this Georgia team is going to win. But if Ohio State can make those big plays, you get a couple turnovers here and there, anything can happen. Um, yeah. I like Georgia. I really do. But I think this game right now, because if you look at this, most people are saying what? All right, oh, let's, most get, pe- yeah. George, let's get to Georgia-Michigan, people- right? Yeah. Let's get to Georgia-Michigan. Correct. We're not talking about Bama and Cincinnati this year, okay? This isn't a Bama-Cincinnati situation. These four football teams deserve to be there, and and they're good football teams, and and they've got good players. they got good coaches. I think that's really where this is um, – this Georgia, this Georgia Ohio State game lies. Can you know? Can 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 this Ohio State team take advantage of some of that stuff outside? We'll see. We'll see. I have a Georgia thirty-four, Ohio State thirty. Like I said, I have Georgia still pulling it off, but it being closer and them not covering. So I do think that it's going to be a more interesting game. I'm giving Ohio State. It pains me, but I'm giving them uh, a lot of credit here. And I um, I think C.J. Stroud is an incredible quarterback. Um, I really do think that when they get going, this can be just an amazing offense. I just don't see it unraveling the way that they want to against Georgia. So I, I, I honestly think Georgia's defense is just ridiculous. I think that they're, you know, obviously the best defense in all of college football. Um and you know we'll we'll see how it how it plays out. If you know Georgia can run the ball, it's going to be a very long day for Ohio State. You know, I think the and, and I am taking Georgia as well, and I'm have I picked them covering. And I think I've seen, you know, you try to in these situations, you know how it is. You try to find similar things, right? Like we talked about Michigan. Basically, this is a Ohio State 2.0 type game against TCU. I look at this game and I think. What is the last quarterback driven offense that Georgia played? They played Tennessee and they absolutely annihilated them. Okay. Um, Did Tennessee have the offensive line that Ohio state has? No, I don't think so, but this is very similar. So, you know, I, I think Georgia prevails, but I think we're in for some really good semifinal games. I think the, these remaining bowl games are really good. They're intriguing. And like tonight's, Oh, you like tonight's OU game showed against Florida state. Most people had Florida State blowing them out. And blowing it takes them out, a, yep. You know, and yep. it takes a late field goal for them to win. So hopefully the semifinal games are just as good. But um, great breakdown, Sarah. I thought you did – this is good information, good stuff. I think our, our listeners will find it very, very uh, useful if they, you know, tend to call somebody or, you know, maybe log into an account and throw a couple dollars down on the hey. team. I think, you know, maybe they'll they learn something or two. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I think these are going to be um, probably the best bowl games we've we've seen. Right. But, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of uh, with these bowl games. I am a very big proponent of um, requiring eight games instead of six. Uh, right. I feel like there's it's just gotten out of control with how many bowl games there are. Not all of them are good bowl games. And then you have some teams um, that only have the six wins playing you know, teams that have nine or 10. Now, OU only had six wins. Florida State had nine. So, and it was a great game. So it kind of goes against, uh, you know, what I'm saying. But I feel like they they definitely need to take a look at the bowl, um, you know, all these bowl games and and figure it out. I think that it would mean more if, uh, if it required more to get in. So, but... You know, on uh, last weekend on New- on Christmas Eve, the the Bills we were div- East uh, AFC East division champs. I'm excited. Um, although I got sn- I got snowed into Chicago, uh, it's been a very mm. long long week. Um, just got back to Buffalo, you know, right before the show. So I will be driving to Cincinnati on Saturday uh, to to watch the Monday night football game. And uh, it's a big game. I mean, it's it's basically for the one seed right now. I mean, obviously, there's other things that need to happen with with Kansas City and and everything. But uh, you know, I, I'm I'm slightly nervous of this game. Um, you know, I, how I, like how do you feel? You know, are you confident? Are you a little nervous? 
I I think Cincinnati's a tremendous team. I really do. And the reason why Cincinnati to me reminds me of Bill's Light. I mean, this is the same type of team. You've got you've got a team that can play, that's got some capable players, and then you have a superstar quarterback that bails them out a lot. I I, I think the world of Joe Burrow. I think Joe Burrow is a is a tremendous player, uh, just like Josh. And um, obviously, they're a little bit different in what they do. Um, but you know, I I like the Bengals. I don't put anything past them. I wish we weren't playing them this week. I wish we were playing somebody <laughs> else. But um, you know, obviously, we'll be ready for them. I do like playing on Monday night. Another day to rest to kind of shake this whole blizzard thing off. Yeah. And um, you know, in the, I like and see where we end up. I feel like it's going to show us a lot of what we need to know heading into the playoffs. You know, right. we've, you know, we started off the season uh, kind of on fire offensively. Uh, we looked ridiculous, you know, certain weeks, um, the way we were able, you know, we just scored at will. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, the last, you know, I was eight weeks or so since um, kind of a, the bye week, um, people have been questioning us and and whether or not we're you know still super bowl favorites and if we if we look the part uh and i think that there's a lot of questions surrounding us even even with the last you know what is it six games seven games that we've won in a row um there's there's always going to be those the the questions until we look the part again so right you know i think that if we we're going to go against anybody to you know to to see how we match up. I think that, like you said, I think the Bengals and us are very similar. Um, now I am a little concerned about their wide receivers versus our DBs. I, I haven't been very confident, uh, in our DBs, uh, for a while now. Um, we have moments where we look amazing and then we have moments where we're giving up these big chunks of, of yardage and, uh, I, it does concern me because they have uh, three really great wide receivers. Well, one great, two really good wide receivers, and then well, they also Chase, have your your boy Chase isn't even leading the team in receiving. Higgins. Well, he was out for three weeks, so so and and in those actually four weeks, I think, and in those four weeks, they went three and one. So um, it just goes to show how you know how good Higgins is right. and Boyd. Um, and then they also have a really good uh, tight end that is back, um, and I'm blanking on his name, so I'm not going to even Hurst. Um, yes. So you know, it's uh, it'll it you know, I'm a little nervous about about their you know offense versus our defense, uh, but I am confident in our offense being able to to match. So that's that's kind of how I always look at these, like. Okay, well, if I'm a little nervous about the points that they're going to put up, you know, do I feel like we're going to be able to match those points? And I do. So I'm not concerned enough to think that we're going to lose the game or whatnot. But some of these people that I've been seeing all over social media thinks that we're going to blow them out. God, I wish I had that confidence. <laughs> I really yeah. do. I really no. do. Because I just think, um, I think Cincinnati has looked really well. Now, they have played um not the same you know caliber of, of of people i believe that that we have over the last few weeks um but they did beat Kansas City we beat Kansas City it it's going to be interesting to uh to see how it all uh plays out but you know i asked you to come up with uh three offensive and defensive keys and i went through the the same thing so my uh, three keys to victory was obviously protect the ball. I, you can't turn it over against Cincinnati because they will capitalize off of the turnovers. Um, the last few weeks, we've noticed that Diggs hasn't really been involved. So right. I would really like to get Diggs back involved with, uh, you know, with getting him the ball. He seemed to get a little frustrated last couple of weeks. So uh, I think if we target him more, it's going to, it's just going to happen. It's, right. you know, he's, He's not one for, for drops. So um, that's, you know, definitely an important thing. And then control the clock. I think that if we give them too much time, um, they're they're going to keep on scoring. And then we, we in turn have to, you know, match right. that, like I was saying before. I and think then, I'll uh, think, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and then I was going to say, go ahead and, and you can tell me what yours were. On, you know, you look at offense and your points are, are, are 
extremely valid. I mean, especially protecting the football, especially protecting the football late in the year and impossible bad weather and cold and all that. But, you know, when I look offensively at this game, my first, my number one deal is to feed Singletary and Cook. Establish the run, continue to establish the run. I think it's been a really, really neat. And like I said, and, and what's funny, I, I'm still going to go ahead with what I said last week. I don't think we have any damn idea what we are <laughs> as far as identity. I really don't. Uh, I think we we run a few things. We might run some inside zone, some outside zone. Whatever stretch, works. A few gap plays. We figure out what runs, and then we go to it again. But, you know, the thing that's nice about this week, huge news today, Mitch Morris is back, or I should yeah. say Mick Morris is cleared, cleared. from concussion, concussion protocol, which would lead me to believe he is going to play. But I laugh at this when I look at the statistics and you talk about the passing game, and the passing game is very similar for both teams. We're basically neck and neck as far as statistics go, but then you look at rushing yards. We we're eighth in the league at 142.8 a game, and they are 26th with 98.2. So feed Singletary and cook, keep them going. They're obviously getting momentum. They're starting to get some uh, confidence. And I think we need to do that. Now off of that, one thing we don't, I don't believe we do enough of, and I think Josh is really, really good at it is run play action with Josh. If we can get that running game going, I really think we have a chance with some big plays over the top to go to your point, get Diggs the ball. If we go ahead and, and run some play action, whether we're in the gun or we're under center, I think he's good at play action either way. Uh, you know, the the masses and the quarterback gurus and those guys, I mean, they feel that under center is is opens up a lot more of the playbook, the play action. But I think there's so much stuff nowadays that um, that's in the gun. I think we'll get some good plays out of that play action wise. But what I the- what I loved uh, last week uh, against uh, the Bears is the bootleg. I've yeah. been screaming when we're in the freaking right. the red zone, especially inside the five yard line. Why not run Josh? But instead of running him up the middle, bootleg him out. Right. So when we ran that, I was literally jumping up and down, saying, "Thank you, Dorsey. You listen." It's amazing when you have two <laughs> when you have a quarterback, you can do two things, right? Yeah. I don't know if you watched that KU game last night. Um, KU fights their way all the way back against Arkansas in the last two point play of the game that they don't get. Their quarterback's balling out. He's one of the best in the country at running play action runnings. They run a reverse and have the wide receiver throw, and he throws it into the stands. It's like, wow. So, so I was actually eating some uh, nice deep dish pizza in Chicago, <laughs> but um, the, the TV in front of me was the basketball game, right. and the TV over to the side was the football game, and literally people were screaming and yelling, <laughs> and I was like, God, what just happened? And then someone right. was like, Someone was like, what an idiot. So right. that's the play that they were probably yelling about. <laughs> right. Why? Why do that? But yeah. And then third, my third thing, and it will be every week, you've got to protect the quarterback. you got to find right. a way to keep him clean. If Josh can throw the ball, has time to throw it, he's going to throw it and you find a completion or he'll go ahead and run it for positive yards. So those are my three offensive keys. Now let's All move right. on to the defense. Let me go ahead. All right. So – you know, I think the last couple of weeks uh, were, you know, we've we've played really good defense. But my my first key is Ben, don't break. Uh, they're going to they're going to move the ball down the the field. We we know it. They have a very good uh, they have a very good offense. But you know, if we can hold them to field goals instead of touchdowns, that's kind of you know my first key. They are going to be missing uh, Collins, which I think is going to be a big deal um, mm-hmm. for them. Uh, so the second thing for me is complete the tackle. There were so many missed tackles. I am so over, over. the last couple of weeks. The Miami it started in Miami. Miami. It's still going on. Yeah, yeah, it's been absolutely terrible. Now I gave them a little bit of leeway because it was so cold this past weekend um, that you know in the first half you could tell no one wanted to hit anybody, um, and then when there was one tackle, I, I like. <laughs> I swear to God, you could probably hear it in like Detroit. It was so loud. Right. So um, it obviously hurts differently when it's that cold. It's not supposed to be that cold Monday night. They better go out there and start pounding right at the beginning so that they get it into their bones. They get, you know, they get that feeling. Yeah. Um, but if they don't, if they do not tackle, it's going to be a very long night. And so that was my second. And then the third is limit penalties. So many times, you know, stupid penalties on, you know, uh, third down. 
Um, this is, you know, offensively and defensively it, it works, but more so on defense, we can't give them first downs because of a super penalty, especially pass interference. Guys, get your heads around, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the, the the tackling deal is is so spot on. It's been driving me absolutely insane the last few weeks. And the other thing about tackling, it's like hitting in baseball. It's contagious. And if, you know, early mm. on. I love that. It is. Ground, yep. And early on, like, you know, was, you step up and you, you you crack a running back or you make a big play on a receiver. And the Milano, you know, Milano comes through clean and, and the tackle for loss, big hit. Yeah. That stuff's contagious. And it gets going. And if you've noticed, these Bills, being young, are a very front-running kind of team. They like to get going and they like yeah. to sing. And they, that's what they do. So if they get success early – it's going to be a long night for the Bengals, but defensively, my three keys, number one is hit Joe Burrow, hit Joe Burrow, and hit <laughs> Joe Burrow. I think that their offensive line is not very good, and then you go ahead and you talk about Collins being out. This is they. We have an opportunity to get home quite a bit this game. We really do, and I think that we we need to take advantage of it. He, I think he still is the most sacked quarterback in the NFL, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did I believe not know that. He, if he's not, he's really close to being the most sacked quarterback. I actually thought that they, I actually thought that their offensive line had gotten arguably better from last year, but um, but that's they interesting. have, but they're still not where they where they that's, where they need to be. Hey, then we need to, <laughs> Milano. Right. I could Milano should be salivating right now, and so should Groot. Right. <laughs> right. So we need to go ahead. We need to light Joe Burrow up. And then the second thing is we need to limit the number of explosive plays. And what I mean, and this mm -hmm. goes hand in hand with, with what you were talking about with your concern with our cornerbacks. You know, we have to go ahead and limit those big plays. Chase is good, okay? Higgins is good. We know these guys can play, but we've got to limit the big plays, the 50-yard, the 30-yard, yeah. you know, those types of things. We've got to do a better job. Of of limit and then this defense usually does. You, you talk about that bend don't break, but um, you know I love Poyer. To... I love Poyer being in there for that one reason because I feel right. like um he's kind of that safety net. So uh, but when you when you're talking about the those those plays, what really stands out to me is when we could be doing so well on defense, and then you have that one play that just you know completely disrupts everything that we worked at. So I think it's a huge key. You know, I, I and you, you brought up Poyer and, and I, I, I look at the way he's been playing. I've got a tremendous amount of respect for him playing beat up, but I, all the great defenses that I've ever loved and growing up in Philadelphia, being an Eagles fan as well, you know, as being a Bills fan, the Eagles always had that safety. They had Andre Waters and Reese most recently, probably my favorite Eagle of all time, Brian Dawkins. Poyer's that guy to me. I I love him in this defense. I love him, and and it's it's going to be a really really tough decision in the off season with him being yeah. a ten. We'll get to that when we get to it. But I love him being. I think the biggest turnaround for this defense is getting him back, having him every week. You know, he was banged up early, and I think that he's just such a tremendous leader. Um, he keeps that defense together. So. Good points on him. Uh, we talk about limit number of first plays. And finally, you got to get off the field on third down. Um, you can't let them continue to extend drives. And if we have the opportunity, you hear it all the time, third and six or less, third and six or less, that's what the offense is trying to get to. We've been doing a really good job of having him be third and six or longer, but we're giving up first down, so we can't give up. We've got to get off the field. Got to get off yeah. the field. And that's, I feel like that kind of started around like the Cleveland game um, in Detroit. I felt like we just could not get off the field. Every time we were doing, we were screaming and yelling first and second down and then third down, they'd come and convert, you know, third and long, sometimes right. third and double digits. So um, I agree. I, it, it's you know, huge. we are ranked. We are ranked 11th. I mean, that's not, we're in the upper echelon. But still, it could be better. It's not elite defense status, especially yeah. when you look at our other numbers where we're seventh in total yards, second in points, fourth in, in rushing yards. You know, we're, we're, we're 15th in passing yards and 11th in third downs. So we just got to get off the field and give Josh the football. We get off the field, it gives our offense more plays. 
which in turn gives us more opportunities. So yeah, that's point, my exactly. points as far yeah. as uh, defense go. I like it. Do you have a, a prediction of the game? <sighs> yes, we're going to win. It's going to be really, <laughs> it's going to be really tight. And I'm not going to tell you what score it is because I don't care what the score is this week. I don't care as if it's long six, as we win. If yeah. it's seven six, I could care less. Um, I do yeah. think we're going to have to. We're going to have to score. I, I do think we have to score more than twenty one points. Oh I yeah, do. I, mean, I do too. To I think more than, we might have to score than more 30. than thirty points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I and, and I you think made a great that's point the... earlier, Sarah. Your your matching comment earlier was 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 dead on. Yeah, and I, I think that that's what it's going to be. I, I honestly think that Joe Mixon hasn't had as much of a breakout year. But with with our running game, we have two running backs that I think kind of match up with, with Mixon. So I actually think our running attack is better than theirs. Plus, we have, obviously, Allen, who adds that wrinkle. Um, I'm not saying Burrow can't run. Um, right. He just – he doesn't as much. Um, so when you – factor in Allen's running. Um, I think it'll be, you know, it gives us a little bit more of a wrinkle on, on offense. I do have us winning. I've went back and forth. I've made a couple of predictions and I keep on changing them. Um, but I, I have 38, 31. Um, so at one point I had it closer and then I was like, no, I, it's going to be by a whole touchdown. Um, but I do think Josh is going to go over 300 yards, um, passing. So, he hasn't in a while, and I feel like this is a game where it's going to require him kind of airing it out a little bit. Um, I do think we're we're still going to run the ball, but I think that that's going to open up our passing game. So uh, what is what is the what is the new term by our the the young people? Uh, I'm I'm him. Is that the yeah. is that the new deal? Yes. I'm him. He's okay, him. I, you know, <laughs> I, I think. I think as a Breaking Bad fan, I think it's kind of spawned off of Breaking Bad. You know, yeah. I'm you think I'm the one who knocks, but um, if if Josh is him, okay, these are the games that he lives for. Yeah, these are the games that he plays big in. Um, these of course, are the Monday games, night too. Uh, uh, you he loves you it. Keep going. You're hitting the. You know, this yeah. is it. This is this is why he made the money he makes. Okay. Um, I 300 yards. I don't know. I hope you, I hope you're right. I hope you're well, right. He, if just, he, just he hasn't yards, been there. Means, yeah, I know. He it, has not been there. So I am looking forward to it. I, I want to believe it. I'm going to try to speak it into existence <laughs> because I think he needs it before we go into the playoffs. And I don't think he's going to play a full game next week against the Patriots. If, if we've already shored up everything else. So Obviously, there's a lot of, you know, mathematics that need to happen in order for us to, to get the number one seed. But um, if if that's the case, you know, I don't think he'll play a whole game. Um, and if we don't get the number one seed and we're, you know, other things happen, he might not play at all next week if we know that we're playing the, you know, in um, in the, the first round of, of the playoffs. So. Well, I want if him. Not, if we have a bye, he, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in sitting people the whole entire. No, no, game. no. If we have the bye, he'll he'll pl he'll play, so he doesn't get rusty. What I'm saying is, if we don't have the bye, he might only play half a game. Okay, yeah, I I could see that, but he's got to play some. Um, of course, I agree. I don't like. I don't, want Dorsey I don't like to him do after. Week. Here's what I don't want Dorsey to do this week: is please don't dictate whether. He, let him do what he does. Early on, I would come out in with Gilliam, and I would come out in two tight ends. Okay, whatever resemblance of Morris and whatever Morris, two yeah. tight end set we have, and I would go ahead in the first or second play of the game. I would run quarterback power, or I would run quarterback counter, GT counter, or power out of out of two tight ends, and I'd let my 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 running back be the lead back to block. And I would let Josh run the football and mm. and get get it going. Let, we don't please. we don't have two tight ends out there often, so right. I like it. I don't I don't want to. Well, we're not going to run them. We want to throw the ball. Let's establish single. And I want to establish Singletary and Cooks too. But I'm telling you, this is one of them games. He's got to get involved. It's just like Miami. It was like it just kind of drudged and drudged, and that third quarter was awful. And finally, he got pissed. And he took that play and ran it down inside the 10. And then he dives over and the rest is history. Yeah. 
They got to let him get involved and get hit a little bit early. I hope we run some quarterback run early. And then you it's might the get whole, your 300. No, then you no, might no, get Josh, your 300 no, yards. No, no, no. It's the whole no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. yes Thank you. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> All right. Yes. So we are exactly. – we're at our, our hour. I can't believe that went by so fast. So do you want to take us out? Um, yeah, I can. Well, first of all, thank you for, I don't think anybody understands the amount of dedication that this, this, this fine lady, that this woman that's on our show, <laughs> I don't think anybody understands what she's been through. I think you've been in every high up building. I think you've been in every high building in Chicago this week, right? I, yes, my son wants to kill me, and he's taken me on quite a few adventures. I am yeah. terrified of heights, so, so it's am been I. a. Junior, it's, Junior would have been going to the top by himself. I would not have been with him. Uh, so yeah, I had a lot of holding my breath, but um, yeah. you know, it's memories with him, experiences. Uh, if I'm gonna be stuck somewhere, it was good that I was stuck with him. You know, I think, but I think I just want people to know what what you know. You just got in an hour ago. You're in Buffalo. We do the show. You prepared the notes earlier. You sent them, and I I thank you. And Aww. it's been an awesome to start this. And I'm looking forward to, you know, a new year next year and all this and and rolling out. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, thanks again, and uh, for all our listeners out there, you've been listening to the Three Man Rush. She's Sarah Larson. I am Jerry Ostrowski. Uh, we will be back next week. Are we on Thursday next week? Yep. Again. Okay. Yeah. We'll be on Thursday. We'll be talking about. The national championship football game, that will be the only game in town besides the Bills. So we'll spend a good yes. amount of time on it as well as Buffalo's game against the Patriots, correct? Yeah, and the in the number one seed. Let's let's speak that into and existence as seed. well. <laughs> we will speak that into existence. So uh, as again, this is the Three Men Rush on the uh, Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network. She's Sarah. I'm Jerry. We'll be back next week right here on Thursday, 9 o'clock Eastern. Go Bills. Go Bills. We'll see you later.